I have a lot of questions about uh -huh, what is in front uh -huh. of us in the best possible way. So when it comes to grains, the possibilities, my friends, are endless. And that is why chef, master food preserver, master gardener, owner of Red Bread, and now author, Rose Wild, mm -hmm. is so passionate, passionate about those grains. That's a look at that face, she's passionate. She That's has visited <laughs> and lived in countries all over the world and uses her knowledge and skills to write Bread and Roses, 100 plus grain forward recipes featuring global ingredients and botanicals. Mm. Without any further ado, welcome to New York Living, Rose Wild. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here this and is, be with you guys and is, feed you guys some cake. Ah, uh, please. You what's, can come back any day. What's better than cake for breakfast? Nothing. Right? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Especially when we're doing one that's like grain forward and not too sweet, which is sort Ooh. of my style of cooking. You know, we really want every ingredient to shine. Perfect. The, yes, please. Now, it's the good. title of the book, Bread and Roses, where does it come from? What does it mean? So the title actually comes from uh, the early 1900s, uh, some mill loft and uh, factory workers protests led by Rose Schneiderman. She gave a big speech about how we on this earth as humans deserve to do more than just work, toil, and then die. We deserve to have wow. sustenance and also beauty and joy, bread and roses. Oh my gosh. So I've taken that and expanded upon that um, to mean literally our bread, that which makes up our bread all over the world, the different grains, and also to incorporate botanicals. Um, oh yes. Because both those things are in danger of disappearing from our plates here in the United States, but are still celebrated around the world. Mm. So I want us to have more instead of less. Oh. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. In, in, when we were introducing you, we, we mentioned that you are a Master food preserver. What's that? So um, a master food preserver and a master gardener, they're yeah. both uh, programs offered through land-grant university extensions. So I did mine through US UCLA. Okay. Um, and basically they are about three to four month long courses that teach you in depth uh, either preservation techniques or gardening techniques. And they're meant to be kind of pay it forward programs where then you wow. volunteer and give back to communities okay. because um, preservation and gardening are some of the easiest ways to be sustainable and make our, our dollar go further and sure. avoid food waste, which is always a problem when we're making stuff. So she's doing more than just composting. I know, this she's is like <laughs> doing, she's, she's, she's multitasking doing she's doing the thing. to the utmost degree. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you, you talk about eating root to blossom. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain what that means? Yeah, so when I talk about eating root to blossom, what I mean is eating the whole plant. So we've probably heard about in terms of meat-centric eating, eating nose to tail. Mm -hmm. So that's my answer to root to blossom, right? Huh root, stem, leaves, and the blossom. Okay. Um, I also like to blow people's mind with the fact that there's no such thing as vegetables, botanically sorry, speaking. What? That's right, there's no such thing as vegetables. It's a social construct of when we eat a fruit in a meal. So depending on the culture you're in around the world, that is gonna change. So once that occurred to me, it blew my mind and I was like, well then anything goes and it's just about what is delicious. And I really think that that's what should drive us. What is delicious? Oh my so gosh. that's why I have this tres leche cake like here. Ooh. We're using corn flour mm. that is native to the Americas, right? Mm -hmm. It built so many incredible civilizations here. Um, and this is a classic chiffon, which is generally a really soft, airy cake. Oh. And because we're going to soak it, it's gonna get even softer. Mm. So adding a little corn adds a little bite, this really deep sort of butter, warm mm. flavor, oh and it's gonna God. really create some texture, which is a key component for flavor, for flavor as well. Right. Texture. Absolutely. Do you guys hear my stomach growling? Uh, yes. I am <laughs> I'm still, my, I still am very delayed on catching up because I'm still stuck on the vegetable thing. I know. Uh, but, but also, I would like you to tell us more about your eat more philosophy. This is very interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, my idea is very much that I want you to have more flavor. And when we're talking about uh, baked goods as well as cooking though, right? Because this book is more than just baked mm -hmm. goods. It's got cooking in it as well. The really universal connective tissue here is a dough. And doughs are generally about 80% white flour, which mm. doesn't taste like anything. Nothing. So when your parents told you like, pastry is a waste of calories, don't eat too much of it, Absolutely, that is true because it's generally white sugar and white flour yeah. and you're not getting Boring. anything. But here we have grains that have the same level of protein as like a steak in some mm. ways, gram for gram. So, and then we're adding in botanicals and fruits and different um, vehicles and that's gonna add so much nutrition. So your cake can be just as nutritious for you as your savory meal. 
Okay. This is a day that I'll remember for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, good. So right here is the soak, which is sort of the king oh, of the tres leche. Show that, yeah. show oh, that yes. To, show that to that rakishly handsome man behind there the camera. There we go. Right so go, right on top, that. the floating thing, those are the honeysuckle blossoms. Oh, yes. That's which you can see that's right sweets. here as well. Honeysuckle um, blossoms. Yeah, honeysuckle and if blossoms. you smell them, May they I? smell like honey. They're very herbaceous. Mm -hmm. In Asian cultures, they are um, drank as a herbal tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to strain this out because I let it soak overnight so that it could really infuse. Oh, my um, God. What is the liquid? The liquid is evaporated milk, condensed milk, and heavy cream. Hence Ooh. the tres leches of there the tres leches. There, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Sometimes I even like zhuzh this up even further with a little dulce de leche. Oh, oh, so, oh I cuatro know him. leches. No, 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 no I know no. him. I, it's only Tuesday. I cannot do it. <laughs> <laughs> only on Fridays. But that's a great thing to do around yeah. Christmas time, yeah. just to make it like even mm -hmm. more special. Look at these images. I'm unwell. So is... I'm going to start pouring this over. And the really hardest part about making a tres leches is, is the waiting, right? Because yeah. you don't want to soak it and then serve it because it won't have enough time to absorb into the cake. So what we want to do is basically start soaking it and then like three times over the course of like an hour, we're going to add more and more and more. And you can more get leches. the sides as oh, well she's gonna... by just <gasps> painting it, which I think is just like a really sweet meditative practice. Let's get this. Yeah, that's pretty. That looks it's awesome. like you've done this once or twice. Nice yeah. And I mean, this is one of my favorite cakes growing up in Ecuador. This is a cake that my abuela would make me. Um, so I'm very, very fond of many great memories. and. So much of what I make is very much like taking memories and just improving upon them with all the knowledge I've gained, right? Because we're only ever standing on the shoulders of giants. That's right. I had a, I had a girlfriend, a Rosita. She was Ecuadorian. <laughs> And whenever I would go to her house, she had tres leches. Because in my house, we're yeah. Puerto Rican, it was always flan, flan, flan. You love I love flan, flan, flan though. Flan, flan. <laughs> don't, don't talk about flan like that. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, what's great is, though, that if you go into any Latin American household, there is a virgin, version of something. That's right. You know? Like, right. we have so much in common, even though it's sometimes easier to see our differences. Sure. So you'll just kind of keep doing this over the course of an hour. And you can, like... Go make the rest of your meal and come back. Go to have this. a glass of vino. Exactly. Have a glass of wine. It's a whole experience. You know why I like a tres leches is because you know you know very well mm -hmm. my favorite cake growing up oh, was my true. mom would always make me an angel food That's cake right. on oh, my birthday. Oh yes. And it's so light and really fluffy well. and it's airy. It's very similar. Yeah, the base. I love that. Love an angel food cake is so special. Look at it going in. So that yeah. you let that sit and you do let this business. sit and, um, and through the magic of television. Through the magic of television, um, we da, have da, da, da. one that is fully soaked that I did last night. <gasps> so you can see it's really absorbed it. It's Thanks. shrunk a little from the weight. Oh, I love that. Right? And then we are going to top it off with a nice layer of cream that, again, has been soaked with that honeysuckle blossom and sweetened with just a touch of honey because we don't want this layer to be too sweet because it's already very rich. Mm. But it's so good to try and impart flavor through um, fat because sure. fat is the thing that carries flavor. So yeah. don't be afraid of fat, but get a really good fat. So this is really nice, organic, whole mm -hmm. heavy cream. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna give it a little rustic whip on top. This is luxurious. And then I always love to decorate with flowers. So we have some flowers that are native to the Americas. Oop, look at this. And we're gonna just add. I wanna take a picture it. of this. Some petals. And this is all edible. This is all edible. I made sure to get organic flowers from the farmer's market. Whenever you're working with uh, flowers, you should be selecting them the same way you would select your, your ingredients. Fruit. Exactly. Your ingredients. Right? I would never no think different with flowers. Yeah. This is actually one of my favorite flowers. Um, I, I absolutely adore sunflowers. They're just so happy. They very are. Very happy. You can't not feel very good Very happy when you and very powerful. Uh, yes. You keep decorating away. I am mesmerized. You can pick <laughs> up a copy of Bread and Roses wherever books are sold. And you can meet you Rose Wild tomorrow for a book signing and a Q&A at our Archistratus, is that how we put Archistratus, yes. Oh, it's in Beautiful Trendy cake. Greenpoint. No wonder it's, you can go <laughs> talk to her. You can get the book. Will you be serving tres leches? I will not be serving tres leches, but I will be serving six other delicious pastries from the book. So you'll have plenty to choose from. What time? And then because more is more, ah! I always like to just do a little hit a on little here. Can you stay? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, the event is from 6 to 8 tomorrow. Please come. I'd love to see you. There it is. And here we go. We're going to dive in. Stick with us. We'll be right back after the break. Oh, my gosh.